Hey y'all, I just wanted to do a video on the setup of the comfort zone, which is an industrial uh, garage heater. It's 5,000 watts, 17,065 BTUs, and the model, this model here, is the CZ220. I figured that I'd take the opportunity to actually show you guys how to get it connected because this is the first one that I had up um, which was noisy and I wasn't sure what was going on with it. But this is it here. Alright, that's much better. So this one here I had up and I just put up last year and unfortunately it would sound, I, I wish I would have took a video of it, it was horrible. It just got louder and louder and it would sound like, you know, the fan was rattling and then it would get like, just like that. That's the way it sounded. <laughs> so record that. <laughs> and so I bought two when I bought this one. And I decided that, you know, I, I just can't take it anymore. I have birds here and I'm kind of like, you know, making them kind of live in a factory setting here. So I actually put one up there in the corner. And so let's get to this setup here. All right, so here we have the back. If you ever need to get into this part here, which you really don't need to. Uh, I believe the first one that I bought, I had to do some things with the wiring, but this one I didn't. So with the actual setup, when you receive it, I'm not quite sure why they're different. Um, and then why some are of, you know, horrible quality and then some just come, you know, in perfect condition. But these are just four screws. I've already taken it off. So let me just get this out of the way. We're going to get this turned over. And now this is the bottom of it. So this is the front of it here, and this is actually the bottom. We're going to have eight screws here, so I'm just gonna take them out, your basic Phillips head. Three on the front, three on the back, one on each side here. Oh, I forgot to take off one. And pop the top. Here we are. This is where all the setup begins, and first of all, if you purchase this heater, you need to know, and if you didn't know, um, you have to supply your own cords. It is industrial, so it's not just a regular uh, plug-in. You actually have to connect your own cord, and that's where we end up in here. Here on the side of your heater, you're going to see two little notches here. You're going to have to kick one of these out for your plug. I use the, the large side. It seems like everybody else did. What you do is kind of take a flat headed screwdriver tap it in there tap around the edges and these will actually pop right out even though they look like they're actually sealed in one they're pretty easy you are also going to need for the cord to be one that is the same type as like a dryer cord and this is what the plug looks like here We had to, actually, I paid someone to come and connect this here because the only place that we have a plug outlet for a dryer is where the dryer goes downstairs. And I definitely wanted to run it on its own um, electrical source. So we had a new one put, a new spot placed in the uh, fuse box there. What you're going to do is want to just insert your line here stick the cords through here this is just a, a little strip to secure the wires so they don't move around inside this is your grounding screw here so you're going to take the grounding wire of the end of the dryer cord and you're going to make sure that you ground it well um, you're going to take the other two wires which are in this photo here and you'll see that the white side goes in l1 the black side you'll connect right into l2 You'll get a flathead screwdriver. You'll just pop these open. What that'll do is just release the nut, actually bring the nut up. That way there's a little thing. Once you screw it back down, it'll connect and secure the wire down. Same thing on this end. So you're just going to 
loosen them, place the wires through them, make sure that they're twisted up nicely and not frayed. Put them right in there, close it back down. And that little nut there will secure it in. Same thing on that side. Now with the wire, when you run it through here, some people are just um, running it right through. And, but there are some uh, little secured nuts that you can actually connect to the inside of the wire, which one, the inside one will look like a little washer um, that screws onto the metal piece at the end, which then you'll tighten down and it'll actually hold the wire in place. So if it's gonna be something that you continue to move around, I really suggest that you get the outer ring to actually hold the wire into place. So that way it's just not bumping around. Even though this is metal, it's not sharp. Um, but you know, you just don't want to take the chance of having anything continue to maybe rub against it and, and fray the wire. Okay. Excuse the lighting. It's holiday season and, um, kind of just in a rush and I wanted to make sure I got this out because someone kind of asked me, how do I hook it up? And explaining it is uh, a little more time consuming and <sighs> just a little more difficult. So. Then you'll have your bracket here. You'll see that the bottom ones here are uh, just little screw-ins, top ones. You have the different placements of if you want it angled up, if you want it angled down, you would kind of adjust these. So we have one bolt up at the top of the ceiling on the beam holding it, but there are place for three and it does come with the three bolts. And that is pretty much it. Sorry for the dimness there. And I'll let you hear this one. This is how they're supposed to sound. We have this in our dining room because we have almost 3,000 square feet with an open floor plan and single paned windows. And it just, the heat just does not do it. So this is our little helper here and it's amazing that's how it's supposed to sound if you receive one of these comfort zones uh, with any brand and it starts sounding like T -t 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 in the beginning like the fan is rattling call the company don't hang on to it don't think it's gonna get better like I did it is definitely not it's defective you're gonna want to call the company that you received it from um, or the company that it came from which I'll give you that information as well too so so here is the information that I have here. World in Maine, Cranberry LASC. They're out of New Jersey. Hang on to it for a second. Comfortzoneproducts.com. Got it? All right, guys. So this is for the CZ220 and the CZ220CN, um, the heavy electric utility heater here. All right, guys, that's the installation of it and the issue if you're having some sounds, go directly to the company, don't hang on to it. it it's really defective and it's not worth hanging on to. Alright guys, I hope this helped. Take care.